Kia ora, I'm Sharon Holt, author and publisher of Te Reo Sing Along Books and in this session I'm going to show you a game that you can play with children to increase the use of Te Reo Māori in your classroom or in your centre. So the game is called Hōmai and you might know that Hōmai means give me. It implies the word please so you don't need to worry about it sounding like it's like give me that or something, it just implies the word please. So, my is a bit like give me please and we're going to talk about how you can do this with the children but first of all I'll just explain something about hōmai in terms of colours which is why I've got these colour pens in front of me here so we're going to practice the game in a minute with pretend children you can pretend you are doing it as well and we're going to use coloured pens the reason I always recommend starting with pens is because pene, P-E-N-E, -E, is the Māori word for pen and also for felt pen. Pene, pene. Be careful not to say pene or pene, it's pene. So the two E's rhyme with each other. Pene. So, if you have seen my book Me Haere, you'll know some of the colours in Te Reo Māori. And if, you're, if you know the colour song, Ma is White, you'll also know some of the colours. So it's an important starter to see what colours the children already know. Some of the ones, the colour names that I use might be different to the colour names that you use. It's probably best to stick with the ones that you're already using, unless you have a good reason to change. I'll talk to you about the various colour names. Many of the colours, just as in English, have different names to them and it might be dialectal or it might be many other reasons but we'll just go with the, the, the most common colour names and the ones that I've used in my book. So this colour, this is a red pen, so this colour is fiddle. So just be careful to pronounce fiddle, not ferro. Fiddle. This colour is green, kākāriki. Kākāriki. There are other words for green, but we'll just go with this one at the moment. Kōwhai. Kōwhai. Kōwhai is yellow. There are actually two common words for blue. You've probably heard them. Kahurangi and Kikorangi. So my understanding is that Kahurangi is this colour, dark blue, and Kikorangi is more of a sky blue. But there are lots of different opinions about that. And whatever one you're commonly using, probably just stick to it. With really little children, you might just want to make sure you only use one word for blue. But as the children are getting older and for primary school, you might want to bring in that there are two different kinds of blue. Karaka for orange, the colour orange. Karaka. So it's not karaka. And the place near Papakura isn't karaka either. It should be karaka because it's also the word karaka. Now I've got a white pen here. It's pretty hard to get a white pen. You might be able to find one like a, um, a whiteout pen, but ju just pretend it's a, a meant to be a white pen. Uh, so ma is white, so that's the common word for white. There are others, but that's the one that most people use. In the colour song, you've probably heard black being Pango is black and mangu is too. Well, pango is the one that I commonly use. So we'll go with pango today. And then ma fiddle is pink because ma is white, fiddle is red, so ma fiddle is pink. Probably the one everyone uses. For purple, many people will be using tawa. Some people will be using the transliteration papuda or pupuda. But uh, others might use poro poro. I use y poro poro, which I believe is commonly the one that most Māori people would use for purple. Y poro poro. So y is in w a i and then p o r o p o r o. Y poro poro. This one's brown. Don't can't really tell, but that's brown. Uh, paraune or parodi are the most common ones. They're a transliteration of the word brown. And kiwi kiwi is commonly used for grey. So those are what I call the most common colours that I've come across. There are 11 of them. So how you would start with this game is collect 
the felt pens, particularly if they're really a strong colour like these ones, and, there's, and there's, it's easy to tell what the colour is. There's some felt pens where it's not that easy to tell what the colour is. Collect the strong colour pens when they run out and put them in a container. You might call it Hormai. You might just have a name on there, Hormai. So let's say you've collected a number of pens in your Hormai container and you're ready to start. So I'll talk to you now about how you can start the game with children. So I would pick maybe three, four or five maximum children and however many children there are, I would have that many pens. And I would always start with the colours that they're most probably going to know. So I'm going to pretend that I've got four children around me plus me makes five. So I'm going to use five colour pens that they most probably will know. We'll find out. If I had three children, I would use three pens. And I'll put the other ones aside. I've put the other ones aside, so we're only using one pen per person for the beginning of the game. So I've got these children around me and I'll pretend that there are, and I'll do it as if, I, as if they were here and what they were doing. I'm going to show you this new game, everyone. It's called Hormai, and it's about give me. So I'm going to get, get you to give me the colour pen. So we'll just remind ourselves, pen is penne in te reo Māori. So that's the word penne. Can you say penne? Penne, good. So this is a pink pen. So in Māori we don't say pink pen, we say penne mā whero. He meaning a, he penne mā whero. He penne mā whero. He penne kōwhai, that's right. He penne kākāriki. He penne karaka. And what about this one? He penne whero. Perfect. So we've got five people, five different colour pens. Now I'm going to leave the pens in the middle there. And I'm going, we've talked about what the words are. Probably just need to do it once. And then I'm going to say, ho mai means give me. So, ho mai te penne kākariki. So I'm asking this person, in te reo only, to give me the green pen. So if they do, ah, kia ora, because kia ora also means thank you. Kia ora. So I'll ask this person over here, ho mai te penne mā whero. Now let's say they don't know what mā whero is, but they've heard whero, so they hand me the red one. So they've handed it to me. Ho mai, they've given it to me. Oh, so I asked for he penne mā whero, ho mai te penne mā whero, and they've given me the penne whero. Ah, oh, I'm not going to say no, I'm just going to say, ah, oh, he penne whero, ah, oh, tino pai, he penne whero, he penne mā whero, ho mai te penne mā whero, and then hopefully they'll be and so we would repeat that with all the people around and somebody um, will hopefully get them right and then I'll end up with all the pens, okay? So I've got all the pens and that's the first part of the game. The second part is for them to do it to each other. So we put the pens down here, same colours. So I'm going to say, now let's go around in a circle. So I'm going to say, Ho mai te penne whero? So that person will give it to me. And then I want them to say, to ask the person next to them for a colour pen. So that person might say out loud, Ho mai te penne karaka. And so that person will give them the karaka pen. And then they have to ask that person and it goes round like that. So then you're getting the children speaking. It's not just you always being the one in, in the beginning. So you need to get them talking as well. So that's Ho mai their pen there, and then the colour goes after that. So it's it's a really basic thing, but from there you can span out to hōmai ngā, or you can bring in more colours. So you could have three reds and four pinks and two greens and seven yellows and five oranges. Let's say you've got all that many colour pens there, then we would say Hōmai ngā. So we're pretty clever, we know all our colours. Let's say hōmai ngā. Hōmai ngā penne karaka. And so the person will give me all of the 
orange pens because nga is the plural. You could explain it or you could just have some extra pens and they'll realise, oh, something's changed. There's more pens. She must be asking me for those that pile of orange pens. So you can take that out that way or you can add in your other colours, your pango and your kiwi kiwi and you can have, once you've started, you could still have three, four or five children but more single colour pens. So one of the keys that you're trying to get here is to have them speaking more te reo Māori and, you, and you, yourself and you're also going to try and be listening to see do they know all the colours. So by the, by the, your goal at the end is to see do these children in this group know all of the colours? So that somebody says, Who might the pen ne pango? They know that that's the black pen straight away without having to even think about it. So that's a goal because it's all very well for us to think we know the colour song or even to know the colours in Mea uh, Haere about the vehicles and colours, but if they're not using that knowledge, then I don't know that we really know that they know it. They just know it as a song. So let's find out whether they know the colours and then you could have that on their learning story. This person has demonstrated that they know all the colours by using the Who Might Get Pen Their Game. Um, and the other thing about that is that once you've done either the Nga route or the, uh, the Colours route, then those children, of, before that even, those children are really likely to be doing that with other children. So if you put the pens in the um, pot and have it as a game named Hormai, you will probably find that those children will play it by themselves and teach other children that game. If not, you teach another group of children. But just do it in a small group at once. The other way that you can uh, see how that's going is if you're particularly if you're just using maybe like a kind of a control group of three, four or five people and you're seeing whether uh, whether they're getting it, whether they're putting that knowledge into their head and it's sticking there, is to find out how that works in context, not within a game. So in that situation, everyone might be sitting around drawing something or using felt pens for whatever they're doing, colouring their pictures or whatever they're doing, making something and they've got colour pens around them, even if they're not using them. So one way when children are doing that, they're quite immersed and they're concentrating and chatting to each other, is to just come along and say, oh, I don't have my, excuse me. Who might the pen call for? So don't be surprised if nobody really responds or if they ignore you or look at you blankly because it's out of context of the game. Even though perhaps all of those children have scored, always get the yellow pen, they always know it. When you're coming in like that with Te Reo Māori, if it's unexpected, they might not get it. It's a bit like how they love you at, um, in the classroom and then when they see you in the supermarket, they hide behind their mother. It's you're out of context. So if you're out of context and you do that and they don't hand you the yellow pen, then you say, oh, remember our game? It's just like that. And then they can do it. And so maybe try that a couple of times because it would be really good to see if they can get that in, con in um, context. So after pens, the other thing you can do is to use other things instead of pens. So we'll go on to that now. Okay, so once you've done the game with pens, you can branch out, but you need to only change one thing at a time. So remember when we were talking about Homai te pene mafero, then you could change the nga, so you could change to give me the pink pens. Homai nga pene mafero. It's the same with that. You don't change more than one thing at once. You have to keep the sentence structure the same. So what I recommend going from after pene is rako. So you can either for rako, you might have these coloured ice cream sticks or you might have these cuisine rods. Both of these are called rako, which is also a word for tree or stick. So I recommend going from pens to rako. It's not too hard for the children to say and also you probably have 
some kind of araco, whether it's these ones or these ones. Stick with the colours as well, so that they're familiar with the sentence structure. So I've, I've brought out, I ignore everything else around me at the moment. We've done the pens. I would then say, oh, remember our hall mic their pen there game? Now we can do it with rako. Hall mic their rako kofai. And somebody hands me the yellow rako. Hall mic their rako kakariki. Somebody hands me the green one. It's exactly the same as what we did with the pens game, but we changed one word, rako. And then if you want to, you can add nga, nga rako, and just have lots of each colour. Okay, so that's one way you do it with rako. You might have something like these coloured cards or some other kind of coloured cards. So at the beginning I might say, oh, well let's do it with something else. And the children might find something to do it with as well, but we might say, oh, should we do it with these cars? And we might investigate the Māori word for car. It's about 50-50. Some people prefer motaka, some people prefer waka. So waka doesn't actually mean canoe as such, it means method of transport. So back in the day, the waka was the method of transport, but now the most common method of transport would be the car. So many people call their car their waka in the Māori world. So this is here waka kākāriki. Remember the colour goes after the noun. And this is here waka karaka, right? This is here waka ma and here waka kōwhai. So that might be the kind of thing that some children are using one of those big road mats and they've got some cars around there. You could maybe join them with the game and just be pointing out, oh, he waka kōwhai, he waka ma, he waka karaka. Ooh, I like this one. He waka kākāriki. So using those little words and then once you've um, sort of used those a little bit, you could say, oh, who might there, if there's there, somebody else that isn't using it, who might there waka kākāriki? And that's give me, and you could say it. So that's how to use that out of context. Or you do a game with the cars. So whether it's, you know, how many colours and how many people. Once you've started the game as a thing, you can change the parameters a little bit, but still only use a different word each time. It's a really good thing for teaching vocabulary. So if you're wanting to teach the vocabulary, for example, in Mehaere, we've got waka and motopaika and different vehicles. If you happen to have those, then these are just ones that I got from the $2 shop, perhaps not all that flash for use, use in early childhood, but there you go. You can, I've used them quite happily with teachers at least. Um, so the word for motorbike in, in te reo is a transliteration, motopaika. So he motopaika whero, he motopaika kahurangi, he motopaika kākariki. And you can have that gap with children too and see if they say the colour. Oh, and they're playing with that, or you make a game just like the pens game that we did before. So that's that kind of thing. If you've got something like these little coloured spiders, you can do exactly the same thing. And then you might have more than one of a colour, so then that's a way of teaching ngā. So you'd maybe go, Ho mai te hunga were were kahurangi. Give me the give me, the person that's saying it, wants it given to them, the he punga were were kahurangi, and ho mai ngā punga were were nui. Give me the, the big spiders. So nui is in the same category as the colours. You could say ho mai ngā punga were were pango, or ho mai ngā punga were were Nui. So you can do things like that. If you have lots of different little insects uh, in plastic or puppets or something like that, you could use that as well. You could have the different insects. But at the moment, we're just sticking with the colours. Okay, we could do the same with these little chairs. We could do the same with these tūru for chair, hoi ho for horse, ho mai te hoi ho paraune, ho mai te Hoi ho parauri, either of those. So 
so you've got probably not many colours. So once you've exhausted that kind of thing, then it's good to go into categories of types. So let's say you had these little finger puppets. So kiwi, maki maki, hippie, and kuri for dog. So you whatever finger puppets you've got. So let's say you wanted to teach the names of those and you might have a book that's working with that or a picture dictionary. And so instead of colours, we're not doing colours anymore, it would just be homai de maki maki. So they have to find which is the monkey and they have to recognise maki maki as monkey, which is pretty easy, and then they have to give it to you. And then of course once they've done that, you go, go round and a circle again with people asking for so start with just a few and then it's a way to teach the vocab for all of those types of things same with insects you could do that with plastic insects and you could do it with all sorts of vehicles so perhaps you had um, the, the motopaika and the waka and let's say we were counting a horse as a vehicle so you'd have all these different vehicles you'd have a plane and a helicopter and a truck and all those and then you're teaching the vocab for all those different vehicles not worrying about colors just the vocab and the other really fun thing finally that you can do with this game is you don't have to know the names for things you just put lots of colored things out on the table like this now Many people know the song E Toru Nga Mea. Not many people know what that means. E Toru, three. E Toru Nga Mea, M E A. So E Toru Nga Mea, E Toru Nga Mea, Nga Mea Nui Nui, Nga Mea Nui Nui. So E Toru Nga Mea means three things. So Mea, M E A, means thing. So this is really fun. Even if you don't know the name for anything, just explain to the children, especially if they know that song, but if not, just say, oh, I found out the word for, for thing in Māori, it's mea, M-E-A. Can you say that? Mea, mea, that's right. So, we could actually play this game, even if we don't know the names for things, we could just say, ho mai ngā mea whero, and that means give me the red things. So I might say that first, just so that they, we, we wouldn't do this until they've played it with lots of things, lots of specific names, but after a while, maybe you could do this as a clean-up game. Ho mai ngā mea whero, so this person is going to give me all the red things. Here's one, here's one, here's one, and there's one. Ho mai ngā mea whero, give me the red things. And I might say that twice, and then after that, I will hope that they will understand. If not, I'd repeat it. So then I'd say, you ask your neighbour for something. And she might say, ho mai ngā mea ma fiddle. And then her neighbour would give her the pink things, which is their only tool. And then this, per this person would, uh, that goes around and around, ho mai ngā mea karaka. So there's all the orange things. Ho mai ngā mea kōwhai. All the yellow things, etc, etc, etc. That could give you a whole term, if not a whole year's work. You would learn vocab, the children would learn vocab, the children are saying a sentence structure with quite a few words in it. If you're going with colours, ho mai te pūngā wereweri, Pangal, they're using four words in a sentence that they've probably never used before. And then we're going to try and think of ways to put that into context in their environment. So if they know the things, then you could talk to them about Ho mai te pūnga wereweri, if they're holding a spider outside in the garden. Ho mai te rako, if they're holding a stick and you don't want them to go bashing someone with it. Or somebody's run off with somebody else's hat. Ho mai te bōtai, give me the hat. So there's lots of ways that you could use that very simple game, ho mai. Enjoy!